I'm Jez Everest. I work at British Geological Survey and I've been working here at this glacier since about 1998 and since 2009 we've had a, an observatory site here at the glacier. Classic thinking suggests that glaciers go through periods of advance and retreat and since we've been working here over the last 18 years the rate of this change would normally have been considered you know, not strange in the, uh, in the light of the last century. However, the last seven years, we've seen a speed of change and a rate of retreat and melting here at the site that is without precedent uh, in historical times. So since 2009, we've been looking at the glacier in a lot more detail. We have systems on site here which look at the glacier dynamics, the rates of change in the landscape around the ice, uh, in the hydrological and groundwater systems that operate beneath and around the, the glacier and within the wider catchment. So we're trying to look at the glacier's health and the state of health of the, the landscape around. Just like a patient in a hospital, we've effectively wired the glacier up and we observe it around the clock. We have many instruments here looking at real-time data acquisition. We're checking the weather conditions, temperature, humidity, wind speed. We measure the glacier movements. We look at the water flow from the glacier and the, the general water flowing in the entire catchment around the glacier. The research we're doing here is important because many communities around the world rely on glaciers for their drinking water supply and their power supply and often for industrial usages as well. Iceland itself is reliant on a lot of hydroelectric power schemes, which quite a few of them are glacier fed. We obviously know that melting of ice sheets causes sea level change and flooding in low lying areas. But what are the effects of smaller ice sheets, not just Greenland and Antarctica, of those that are, are sited on terrestrial land masses? What are the effects of their melting? We know that glaciers melt during the warmer months, that's not unusual but we're starting to see worrying patterns now, particularly here in Iceland, where the glaciers are melting all year round. Our research is helping us to recognise symptoms of an unhealthy glacier. We're seeing and measuring early warning signs that a glacier, just like this one, is entering a period of rapid melting. The observatory we have here is a big team effort, not just from scientists from the UK, it includes scientists from Iceland as well, and we have visiting scientists from across the, the UK university spectrum. Our team from British Geological Survey includes obviously geologists, but we have hydrogeologists, seismologists, geophysicists, and obviously technical support as well. As I say, it's a big team effort. We're measuring the glacier's movement through GPS and laser scanning using an instrument like this. We record the weather from permanent stations on the glacier sides. We have remote cameras at several locations which record pictures at least three times a day, in some cases every hour. We have seismometers detecting and recording ice quakes and normal earthquakes and volcanic activity, particularly important here as we're sited on Europe's second largest volcano. Some of our scientists use radar equipment that look through the ice to the bed and actually see the internal structure of the glacier itself. Our hydrogeologists sample and analyse the flow and chemistry of groundwater, which is partly recharged by glacial meltwater. We have observations on the glacier surface, where we're positioning stakes to measure melting, and we observe and record the changing patterns left by the meltwater, the ice caves or moulins, and the meltwater channels on the glacier surface and within the glacier itself. It's a full and comprehensive survey, and we think it's probably a world first that combines such a wide range of sciences, instrumentation and observation all at a single site. We'd call it whole system science if we were pushed to come up with a name. Looking at the glacial system as a whole has clear benefits, such as understanding how glacial structures control meltwater drainage, understanding how glacial melting affects landform development, and understanding the hydrology and water resources of the whole catchment, from the ice to the river to the groundwater. Scientists around the world are reporting rapid melting of ice, and if we thought it was part of a normal cycle, we wouldn't be so worried. 
But in historical terms, the speed of melting is quite alarming. What will this glacier look like in 10, 20, 30 years time? Will it even be here? We're developing a better understanding of glacial systems and we're starting to be able to recognize the signs of glacier health. But will all this be too late?